What is up? What is up, folks? It's CJ and Prime. We are back with Comic Book Corner. You know, much like more from Manny Cash, you know, we had a long extended break uh, since Comic Con. And much like more from Manny Cash, Comic Book Corner, you know, tons of stuff have happened since then. Some much like more from Manny Cash, you know, Prime is Negro Domus on this ish. But uh, how, how's it going, sir? Uh, Guten Tag, mein dude, and the Konnichiwa Fraulein's. So you might be saying, well, what was Prime Negro Domus about? So um, we, we, we've we had conversations, a lot of us, offline and online about, uh, you know, we talked about the nature of how these businesses have went so full tilt on streaming that a lot of folks didn't realize that the downsides to going to streaming, right? You know, the whole thing with like having physical release and going all digital and then a lot of people found out the hard way that going digital has a huge downside, which is companies. And we saw with WB, they'll just take shit off the fucking streaming service abruptly with no rhyme and no reason, no rhyme and no reason. And Disney is another one where some of their Fox properties, since they bought Fox, um, you know, abruptly got taken down and stuff because they can do that. Right. Um, so Disney, I, I, I'm just going to say this, you know, these, these things happen with a lot of businesses. This isn't anything new. When businesses, when they figure out that they made stupid ass mistakes, they tend to uh, reverse course on certain things. And um, so when we did our episode before Comic-Con, um, there was a company that wasn't Disney that was putting out cases like uh, uh, steelbook cases of WandaVision and Loki, but it didn't have the disc in it. And we were all laughing at it. I think Prime, you and Landro were like laughing your ass off at like that, the notion that they would put that out with no with fucking fucking audacity, <laughs> with no DVD. And I was like, right. damn, Disney, did you do that? And then kind of find out it wasn't Disney that authorized it. It was like a third party company that did it. But still, the principle of it is like, who the fuck is buying that shit with no DVD or Blu ray in it? Like, the fuck? Right. So, so Disney uh, early this week, uh, now last actually it was late last week. Uh, they announced that uh, we're getting uh, Mandalorian season one, WandaVision, and Loki one and two, sir. One and two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mandalorian season one and two, uh, WandaVision and Loki on a uh, steelbook uh, Blu ray. Now, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm a skeptic. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to be a skeptic, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. Something smells rotten in Denmark. So maybe, maybe they're just trying to recuperate some costs because um, a lot of shit isn't in peak revenue season right now. Um, oh, yeah, you know, writer strike and after strike. strike. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And so they, they got to maybe, uh, and they up the price of uh, not just Disney Plus, um, a lot of other streaming services because their owners are jackasses and greedy assholes. Up their price of uh, the streaming services, and um, yeah, mm, yeah, you're right on the uh, something's not smelling right. Right, right. So I mean, like I say, I'm happy that it's happening because you know me. If you take nothing else from me, I'm all about consumer choice and customer choice, and this gives people options. Yeah. Um, if it's if you want to just watch it on streaming, that is up to you. But if you want to have a more permanent option for you, that is also up to you. And so, I don't see a downside in this. I think this is all a good thing. Plus, people getting paid one getting paid either way. So it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, it was kind of crazy to me because Netflix started all this with, you know, the binge watching craze, right? And it cre- and it was kind of weird because Netflix, I don't think they necessarily prevented some of the shows that they had from not being on DVD. Because didn't some of their stuff on Netflix pop up on DVD, like House of Cards? And stuff? Yeah, like House of Cards, Stranger Things. Like they do have Netflix does release a lot of their stuff on um, DVD and Blu-ray, but like they don't do their whole catalog. It's like select. A bunch popular of ones, stuff. <laughs> the popular right. ones, you know, kind right. of thing. Stuff guaranteed sellers, like you know, like you say, Stranger Things, House of Cards, um, Cobra Kai, shit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So even they know that you know you got to recuperate and get some of those costs in. And, you know, like I said, a lot on the uh, Morphin Metacast and a lot online. Like 
the fact that they have programmed people into just accepting the uh, ecosystem of streaming, it just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth mm -hmm. because a lot of it is so anti-customer. A lot of it is so anti-creative because it, it boils down to, because people want to talk about how, oh, well, streaming is convenient. It's not about convenience. All this boils down to is these motherfuckers don't want to pay money. They don't want to pay the manufacturing costs for making the physical media, and they mm -hmm. don't want to pay the rights and royalties and residuals to people who made the show, such as the, such as the producers, the, the creators, the actors, all those people. They don't want to pay any of those fees, and they would just rather strap it on streaming, say X, Y, and Z had this much um, viewership, and after yeah. a set period of time, just pull it down and shelve it ceremoniously and have that media be corned off and cut off and lost to you forever. They can kiss my ass on that. Which is why, you know, people pirate stuff, which is why when you have somebody like Zazlav that said, hey, we're just not going to put out Batgirl, delete all that stuff, which I don't think they deleted it personally. I think they, they're they keeping it in the pocket. Yeah, they voted um, it. Which, which, to be only real, they did that shit because Mike Keaton's Batman was very prominent in that Batgirl movie. Which is why they killed the character spoilers in the flash movie, in the flash movie um and it's like i don't even want to sit there and give them credit for that because it's like you could have still put that movie out and got some goodwill out of it like what's the what's the worst that can happen you already lost money so what, what more money are you going to lose off this right right you no know, it's not my money so you know what the fuck do i know but like it's, st it's starting to make people really like you put out that flash movie you Y'all should have just went ahead and just put out the Batgirl movie if you if you're gonna do all that shit. Like, might as well. Like, like you know, because if the excuse is Batgirl looks too much like a TV movie than the actual movie, which I still don't know what the fuck that means. I still don't understand that. I mean, do you know what that means? Because I don't. I you know, who knows? Who knows? Bro? You know, we we both watched the Arrowverse, and that's like TV budget. So I I, I you know. I saw somebody say Blue Beetle is like a TV movie. I'm like, where? Because that budget is way more than what the uh, fucking CW verse stuff is. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. It's 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 pretty TV movieish. Like I, I it you could tell it was filmed for for a uh, streaming release. Like I tell you that. Like I'm not. I know it don't it, was, it, it don't it don't have the CW. You no, know, no, it doesn't smell it to have, it. That's why I kind of feel some way when people say that shit. I'm like, I yeah, see like, the CW verse. Like, what are we right, talking about, right. here, people? It doesn't it doesn't have like network tv stank on it but yeah, it yeah. does have like higher quality like it has like small superman and lowest level of like a notch a notch above that you know what i mean i'll be feeling this way because i'm like look guys we all lived through the arrowverse it had his ups it had his downs me and prime joked about how the flash exhausted his budget on gorilla city it's like i don't think it's that bad guys like what are we doing here like come on easy <laughs> let's not let's not do this <laughs> but yeah that, that, that makes that makes sense and stuff i i don't know it's just you know, it, it's just kind of funny to me that that companies they do this back and forth stuff. I mean, look, we have talked that length of how Sue Pro was like, "Hey, we we're streaming Ultraman, but you can go to you know Amazon, Best Buy, and all these other places and get our physical release of Ultraman, and they're raking in fucking money hand over fist." Right, right, right. So, like I said, it's just so. <laughs> And like I said, it just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth, especially all the people who go hard in the paint, going, "Ooh, who still buys physical media?" people who want to preserve media and watch the shows that they like i mean like, which, is, which, <laughs> I mean, which is why a lot of us were pissed at warner's i think i don't know if they shut if they shuttered their um dvd on demand section i don't think they shuttered it yet but like there's a lot of people that are feeling some way on how Warner Brothers is run because their DVD on demand thing was really great for a lot of projects that people wanted. Like SWAT Cats right. was on DVD on demand. That's how I got my DVDs Same of SWAT Cats. <laughs> and I got um, the Thundercats uh, Cartoon Network reboot on Blu-ray because that was also on demand. Yeah. And so, um, and it's so insane because you, did you hear what they're doing over in Australia with Disney? How they're Oh, the they, last cut, they, cut, physical, they cut them off. <laughs> yes, the last physical Blu-ray release in Disney. And it's on top of y'all. It's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That'll Which is last... weird because like, why Australia, but not what, what's up with Australia, but the rest of the world gets physical releases continuing. That's kind of weird to me. Because I'm assuming like sales there are down because the prices for blue uh, physical meat over there is kind of out of fucking control. And I feel like they are using that to test the market. Which is the worst uh, thing because like right. This is, is this is a fucking trial run because they're gonna go, hmm, 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, it'll uh, put this way. I feel it will sell here, obviously, because people do want the Mandalorian season one and two just to have on their shelves for sure. Like I think even WandaVision and Loki will sell because which is kind of funny I mean, how these yeah. companies say that they don't oh we don't know if we can measure ratings bullshit because you put out wandavision and loki out on on steelbook which means which tells me those were definitely your top critically acclaimed mcu stuff you could have put out any other ones in order right. but you put those two out right and it's so and strange <laughs> and it's so strange that you didn't release also in that batch captain america and the winter soldier hmm, hmm. fascinating hmm. Which apparently that is coming, you know, Falcon, Falcon okay. Soldier is coming. It okay. is coming. It is coming. But still, it's kind of like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Put this way, folks. But these writers and actors strike. Don't let these companies bullshit you because the notion is that the notion that Netflix and all these streaming people can't. They oh we 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 have a reason for canceling it. And I'm like, bro, you have the numbers in front of you. You just don't want to give the numbers because if you give the numbers, that means you actually have to do your job and pay people, and you're scared of that. <laughs> so right, right. it's so fucking it's so it's again it's so fucking frustrating hearing all these um look and I don't want to I don't want to call people <laughs> boot I don't want to call people names I don't want to call them bootlickers. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But it's it's so infuriating watching people cape this hard for a corporation that does not give a fuck about you and it's not about your convenience for streaming. It's about they just don't want to pay people their fucking money. And it's so and, fucking. And, and granted, it is. It's one of those things where I think, I think for a lot of us and stuff, which is probably why like it, this whole thing with the strike is so. It, it's kind of interesting because I think there was a point in time where we all were trying to understand streaming so there was a measure of like we took for granted how much that streaming took away the power of what we were getting from the network side of things and stuff i guess for, i guess from the actor's point of view maybe there was a layer of like oh we're fine streaming whatever whatever without factoring in like how much this is really going to change the dynamics of everything um and yeah it was it was definitely kind of like one of those situations that just you know it, it, it's it's difficult but i am kind of curious to see what's going to come of this writers and actor strike because like right now like with movies they are dropping like right now dune 2 got delayed heavily right and that's one of the movies i was looking forward to the most i'm kind of bummed about that shit but i totally understand pay those people their fucking money it's that simple yeah, yeah, and now the Marvels is getting IMAX, which is hilarious. Just <laughs> did you see the comment the director made about how? Um, I'm going to paraphrase because I, I I read the comment in passing and I just kind of chuckled. Where she says it's not people don't have superhero fatigue; they just have bad story fatigue. This is that's the paraphrasing, and I felt like. I was drinking crazy pills because CJ, what the fuck have we been saying for the last like five years now? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I said for a while that a lot of resentment people have for the MCU is that, at least for me, from my perspective, it's this notion it's like competition, competition breeds competition, right? Like we even like when we as wrestling fans, we love seeing WCW and WWF go together because it was kind of like, you know, going back and forth because you had a choice as a fan and it bred a layer of competition. You didn't have one thing, you know, leading everything and stuff, which is why when WWE became the lone factor, WWE had 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 multiple times of being complacent, right? And that's why you get your TNAs and right now AEW coming up because it's like, yeah, you need some competition to kind of like, yo, you need that there. So for me, like I look at the MCU, that shit with COVID and everything, previous owner before Iger came out, he got too bullish with streaming and it affected a lot of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Big time. Like, because even for me, it's like, yeah, I can't defend that shit. Like, because everything, like, because the thing of it is, when you look at what was in 2019, what they had for phase four, it wasn't a crowded mess. They had like, hey, we're going to do a movie, we're going to do the Disney Plus movie, Disney Plus movie, Disney Plus but it was all spread out to where people had some breathing room, much like the previous phases and you didn't feel overwhelmed. And yeah, COVID happened. We didn't have nothing in 2020, but it's like somebody should have stepped in and said, Hey, look, even though we didn't put anything out for the year, 
let's just stay the course of what we're doing and not get bullish and what happened we got he got bullish and it was just non-stop mcu stuff which right and i know like for some like, people they liked but for me it was like yeah i can see why somebody Ooh. can get overwhelmed because you only had a one week break and then boom you're on to the next mcu stuff and it's like oh okay and that's not even counting the movies so it was a lot and right. you're talking about two year break from 2021 to 2022 it was a lot right and it, and it felt like it was like non-stop and then especially with like the varying degree of quality, like mm-hmm. that also was pretty apparent. And it's like, look, I get that a lot of people like it, but like you cannot look me in my eye <laughs> and tell me that all those TV shows and movies, that they were all utterly flawless. Those are all 10 of the 10 shows. You had no I know, they, had, they, had, they had issues. No, no. Like I, said, I, think okay. Loki is, I think Loki was probably the only one I would say is close to flawless in a way. You know, I don't see what you're seeing, bro. I I say close to flawless because it felt like okay, they had a story, it worked for what they're doing, and that to me it worked, but at the same time, bro, bro, I love Tom Hiddleston and I fucking love them. (laughs) I love those actors as well. That show sucks ass. Now, 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 Grant, now, now, granted, it could be because I'm all in on the jokes of the Doctor Who fan base that love Loki out of spite because they fucking hate Doctor Who. So that's the other ass. That's the other half of it. So it's like true. Okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so it's like a spite but it love still sucks for Loki. Like, <laughs> like I would say, like objectively for me, what if it's the only one that I didn't like personally? Like I didn't I mean, hate it, but it was like, eh, I, you know what? I'm. So I can glad. live without it. I can live without it. I can live I'll, without it. I only watched the episodes my boys told me to check into and I'm so glad I did because I could not I could not stomach that show at all and I'm so like glad the I didn't episode people... I liked I was not I was not in love with the zombie shit I fucking hate that shit just further emboldened my hate right. for Marvel zombies right bro bro it's like the, the fucking tone in that is like it's a perfect example like when people say why don't you like MCU humor I would just show you that Marvel zombies episode <laughs> it's like it has the wrong fucking tone there's no fucking gravitas, like the fucking quips left and right, like bro, shut the fuck up. But like, at the same let, time, let us same wa- breathe, goddammit. But I was watching that and I was like, this is kind of like how that fucking Marvel Zombies book evolved into just it turned into a fucking like parody. joke and a parody of itself. Right. And that's what that zombie episode was. And it's like, I don't even hate the jokes. Fuck all that. It was just shit like, why is zombie Thanos still like he has the glove and he's still kind of like being th- it's like it's just shit like that didn't make sense for me because that's why i hated marvel zombies because it's like zombies to me should not have no like oh they can still control their powers kind of vibe that's that's me that's just me i, I just want traditional zombies where they don't remember shit and they don't have no control of powers once you give zombies control of powers it's like well what the fuck is the point of turning from them into zombies like it's just it, it just and rubbed another, me the wrong way and another thing i'm so glad that other people saw what I saw when all the people who just, you know, dick riding anything Marvel, when they were trying to say that what if had some of the best animation, I'm like, y'all are smoking crack. Y'all, y'all drinking the drugs, bro. <laughs> Ain't no way in hell. Especially when you look at what animated came out that year. Right. Including like, you know, Pixar. I was like, you gonna look me in my eye and tell me what if has better animation than Arcane? Really, bro? You really, bro? Me, so- Soul just came out. I'll take that animation over what if. Bro, really? Really okay, and it's not to say that the animation of what if was trash, it's just the best, oh, really. Like, the no, best, like, like the great. No, I, no, I wouldn't say I would say it's a notch above trash because the animation was stiff, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, the character like... models, the character models look great, they're like the likenesses to the actors, those all looked amazing. But when they had to move and do things, <laughs> however, you know, when they had to be animated, that was the issue. <laughs> It's like, it's like with Invincible. Like I like the animation of Invincible, but I can tell that they cheated on certain animations in Invincible. Like uh, my man, the speedster that got killed and stuff. They cheated on his speed, the, sp- the way they sh- animated his speed. It was like, okay, I see what they did. They cheated a little bit, but it's fine. It works, you know that kind of shit. So it's like, right. it's like when people are like, oh, what if should have won best animated? Easy there, buddy. Hey, buddy. No. Oh, oh. No, no, pump no, your brain. No. Oh, man, pump. First of all, first of all, <laughs> no. puff, puff, pass, my guy. It's puff, puff, pass. You fucking up the rotation. Because it's like, because it was a lot of, because I even go so far, like, was it Thor, Love, and Thunder, right? I enjoyed it. Same time, a lot of us were talking. I was like, like, Gore the God Butcher could have been its own. He could have been like a mini 
Thanos, you could have like a little mini side trilogy of movies with Gore the God Butcher on the side, and that would have worked. I mean, you know, you could have set up the next Thor trilogy to be that Jason Aaron God of Thunder run. I mean, especially with the way you ended it, it's like, okay, she 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 can come back, cool, and you could have had Gore still kind of out there, and it's like, okay, you, you had something, and it's just, ah, that's what you got, and it's like, yeah, even a lot of us that enjoy the movie were really kind of looking at it like you guys pulled phase one shenanigans of killing your best bad guy. And how dare they? How <laughs> dare they threaten us with a fifth one? How dare you? How Look, fucking dare you? Don't bring back Taka. He, he's ran his course. They said he's, he's the he's one doing it. I'm like, what are y'all? Are y'all? How do you fail upwards? Like, how is that? How? 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 And unless you're unless you're reining him in to where you get him to do what he was doing for Ragnarok, fine. But even then, it's like, I think people want something different because, like I said, Taka had his time, just like Wheaton had his time, and it's like, yeah, they clearly had to move on from Wheaton because his shit ran his course. And once you run your, and it's like with comic books, when you when a writer runs his course, what do they do? They get a new writer come on in. Mm. That's how these movies should do. Like, hey, you you ran your course. The Russo brothers ran their course. They had their fun. All right, cool. Get some new people. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm about to make that so long gay Russo joke. Uh, <laughs> 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 but right, just like shake it up and like, and it's so. Again, this is another frustrating thing. It's watching a lot of these people who are like so hopped up on their own farts who need like like we say, some people just need an anchor. They need to be reined in like and people think like like, like that's a negative thing. Like, no, creative people need to be unbound. No, some creative people need to be put. Dude, we just tank. we did an episode on Shin Kamen Rider and we talked about how uh, what's his face like, yo, I know. He, I was just I, about I, to read I, it up. I don't need, I don't need it, this boy there to kind of like, yo. I don't need a Gucci so fucking bad to oh, yes. his ass in. <laughs> You need that. Like, that's the one thing. That's I think we said this multiple times online and off. I was like, Zack Snyder just needs somebody there next to him to rein his ass in. And he, just to put their hand on the shoulder and go, no, <laughs> Zach, no. no, 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 that's not the move. We're, We're not, not doing, doing that, this. dog. That's not the move. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Like, you, right. sometimes George, you need... Luke, George Lucas had that in the 80s. Look, look what we got when he had that. Look, prequels, they were like, George, you the man. Yes. And I'm like, that's not the move, guys. Like, we... then even him at the end went, perhaps I've gone too far because <laughs> even he realized sometimes you got to get in check, bro. Sometimes he's might have And when he does kind... have a, oh, go ahead. I was like, sometimes you need that kind friend to just slap you upside your head and go, we're not doing that shit. <laughs> and, and when he had a steady head next to him, what happened? We got the Clone Wars cartoon. Right. Because yeah, Lucas was involved in that. He had a steady head next to him. Like, hey, hey, we're not doing that, George. Here's what we are going to do, though. It's like, All right, cool. Steady hand. What we get? We got the fucking Empire Strikes Back. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Steady hands. You Sometimes you need that person to be like, no, but... I like your passion, but this is the direction we need to go. Like it's or just the okay, let's take that and let's keep the spirit of it, but do something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, because that's that's the thing that like a lot of us, even on the WB side, when we talk about their stuff, it's like I get where Zach was going with, but somebody need to be Zach. Like Zach, we're not doing Death and Return of Superman. You want to put Batman in it? That's cool. We can we can work with that. <laughs> but they were right, like, Zach, right. do whatever you want. And I'm like. It's not the move, man. I and like, look, I got a lot of issues with some of the things that Zach did or Zach was planning. But one thing that I just really appreciated that he was doing is like he just treated shit seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some people might say he treated a little bit too seriously, but I'm like, in contrast, like there has to be a happy medium. Like not everything can be. I don't want everything to be fucking have no gravitas. Like there's a quip every five minutes. Oh, he got the I'll gravity say, for sure. I will give him that. There were moments in Man of Steel, even some moments in BVS. And even some moments in Justice League where it's like, okay, he he nailed the gravity pretty fucking right. like right. on point. But like, like he, let a scene be funny and let a scene be serious. Like they those two things can't exist in the same fucking movie. Like let scenes breathe and exist in their in their own space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is which is ironic because I one of the things that I kind of hate that people do, like um, like you know, the first Shazam movie and now Blue Beetle is that a lot of folks are like, oh my God, both of those movies are too MCU. And I'm like, guys, do y'all read comics? Because like... I swear, man, that brain rot goes two ways, man. <laughs> like, I'm like, on. guys, do y'all read Blue Beetle? Like, this is pretty Blue Beetle. I, just saying, this is Shazam. I, I, maybe it's just me. Like, I... 
<laughs> not so much the second movie, but you know, first, saying, I don't know, dog. That first movie could have been a little more Shazam, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Trust me, we I could have gone. We we could have gone further. Well, you know, The Rock kneecapped that shit. I was like, motherfucker. I, I love you, The Rock, but you kneecapped. You you could have you could have made Shazam your own thing without right. the the Superman sh- and all that shit. It would have been. I'm saying like the Shazam family could have had his own little corner in the DC universe, bro. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Zachary Levi versus The Rock. I know that don't sound sexy, but fuck, man. That would have been dope as and shit. I mean, and I mean, I get that Henry's your boy. I understand. I wish <laughs> I wish Henry was my boy. But um <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? I mean <laughs> that man. Um <laughs> but like play with the toys you get, bro. Don't be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, that, I mean, look. Like, I would have loved to see a fucking movie that had like the uh, Shazam versus the um the Monster Society with Savannah and the Black Adam and fucking Sabak. Look, look I, the Crocodile I felt, Men. I would have fucking I, ate I, that I, shit up. I felt the director, because even the director said his first movie, there was a reason why he threw everything in the kitchen sink, because he didn't know if he was going to get a sequel, which is understandable because the state of WB at that time. But I really felt that he was leaning towards that, and then they were like, all right, uh, you got a second move, and he's like, fuck. <laughs> we're up and, right now. and I'm so mad that you fucking reduce <laughs> Mr. Mind to a goddamn me. First of all, how dare you have the perfect Mr. Mind introduction in that first movie? Like, bitch, perfect. I could not have asked for a better introduction for that <sighs> character. Then you turn him into a goddamn meme in the second movie, you son that of a bitch. The second movie was a meme. If I see you in the streets, bro, <laughs> I'm throwing a calzone. Please look, believe. Look, Prime, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that somebody put a gun to his head and said, you better make a second movie. <laughs> And make it funny, but I don't make it funny. <laughs> make it funny. <laughs> Zaz laugh at a gun to his family's head. I want to chuckle. And whoever said that Asher, the guy who played Billy, the person who played Billy, couldn't be in the movie that much, I want them to go fuck themselves. Because that kid is a legit amazing actor. Um, yes. And I wish that he would have been carried the movie. And my problem with Zachary Levi in the second movie is that he was playing Billy like an eight year old when Billy is a damn near a grown man. <laughs> like, what are you? That's the other. That doing, was the bro? that was the other handicap of like the years passing from the first movie to second and stuff is that WB didn't really strike by the iron's hot because it's like, hey, uh, the whole purpose of Sam is he's a kid, so you might, unless you, because one of the things that. Uh, I enjoyed about Young Justice because this tells you how much of the Shazam stuff on the DC side of the comics I didn't know. So that whole episode with uh, Mary Marvel and Zatanna and that whole group getting tested and stuff and how like the whole thing of her not being Shazam anymore was kind of like an addiction to her. I thought that was actually a dope thing. And I was like, that could have been interesting, especially if you have an older Billy now. How does that affect all the other kids who are older now and are clearly teenagers with the exception of like with the, the little girl? Mm. That's about it. That would have been an interesting thing, but the movie ain't going to do that. Right. And it know? was so weird that they didn't make because I was I was holding that hope that they were going to make Billy and uh, Mary blood related like they are in the comics. But then they just didn't. And I'm like, that is so weird. It's so it's so weird that they're not family. You know what I mean? Like, it's so I mean, they're family, but like they're not. Blood siblings, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just, eh, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, what what can you do? But um, I mean, look, passion is how James Gunn did that second Suicide Squad movie, like just top to bottom. Like you know that that was like, oh, this is this is a person that knew to do some serious. Like when we saw Starro in that second Suicide Squad movie, like jokes aside, the moment where he's describing, you know, being captured and all that stuff, I was like, yo, this is like... Giving things gravitas, giving characters <laughs> moments to breathe in both a funny and a serious moment. And I also like, because this is my thing with James Gunn, because I was so scared when I saw the rumor that Starro might be in the movie, and I was like, he's going to turn Starro into a fucking joke. I understood but your fear, because the trailer does give off like, holy shit, it's a kaiju, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. 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 But then he actually like treated Starro with the respect Starro deserves as a character, and I'm like, I like, like a that. threat, like a legit, right? Because he fucking is threat. a fucking legit threat. <laughs> People are like, what does starfish do? You mean to tell me you're not scared of a motherfucker that can stick bro. a piece of organic flesh to your face and take away your autonomy? That's uh-huh. not fucking scary as shit to you, bro. And you can't just take it off you because it's it's on there. It, that that's it, right? And then he then he elevated it too because like in the comic books you can take the starfish off and the person's fine. No. Not in this movie, bro. Once it's, no, on, once it's you, on, it's on. You go, you go, bro. That's it. 
It's like, and it's like, oh, and even to the point that it's like you feel bad for Starro because he was like, I was just a low down in space. Like, I didn't, I didn't want this. You know, right. it's like, it's, it's what good writing, it's like, it's, it's what good writing does, man. It elevates material. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's, that's why it's just weird to be on it, the brain rots on both ends because everybody's like, you got some of them folks that were so hardcore on Zack Snyder's vision, like, I don't like James Gunn vision. Da, 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 da. I'm like, did you guys see Guardians 3? Because Guardians 3 was actually pretty fucking dope. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was really expecting, like, not gonna say the worst, but like, ah, that'd be all right. But it's like, that's actually pretty fucking good. Damn. Okay. okay. Hmm. I had a, a kafal good time. Yeah, so it's, it's, you know, I'm curious. I'm definitely curious on what James Gunn is. Like I said, obviously Blue Beetle is like the unofficial start of it, even though we have an Aquaman movie that's about to drop. And and you know what I just feel so I just I'm so angry because I got a, I got a movie that had three comic book accurate Blue Beetle costumes, and I feel like it's not going to do well. And that makes me so angry. Now, now WB. I, I think oh, if they're smart, they will realize, well, we were in the act. Like, the only thing Blue Beetle has, even despite his box office, is the fact that we're in the actors and writer strike. So that's going to affect the box office of certain things. Barbie, obviously, doing what it did, it got the push because they were doing push for that before all this shit started. It became, yeah, it became a goddamn meme. Yeah, like um, months before it. So that's an anomaly because it's not affected. But Blue Beetle, like, they Blue can't Beetle do Blue Beetle coming it. behind... Shazam 2 and The Flash did not help it at all. Yeah, Let's and it's be, a good movie. Real. It's a good movie, but it's definitely going to get the benefit of the doubt from WB, so I don't think they're going to ditch that because it's like, look, you know, hey, we're notwithstanding, we had that. Like, I, bro, I, you I, are optimistic as shit. Look, bro. look, it's, put this way, it's in a better position because of the, stri- of the strike. If there was no strike and it made that money, oh, it would have been dead in no fucking water. I think it only get, it's only going to get saved because well we were in the actors and writers strike and we couldn't really put a lot of money behind marketing so fuck all right and from what I'm hearing Flash actually might break even for WB on VOD apparently you lie you lie D- dead ass ain't no way ain't dead no ass way. apparently ain't Appar- no way apparently bro ain't no way bro apparently oh, so okay. I, I, Hey, hey okay. look, apparently. I mean, Blue I Beetle... still haven't seen it yet because I was gonna wait for the um the physical I'll, release to put on the shelf. I will, I will wait for the physical release, sir. I'm um, waiting, I'm waiting on the physical release. Blue Beetle about to go on VOD uh next month. Oh my god, serious? Damn, that means it's not making that. Oh my, that's depressing, bro. Oh, yeah. bro, that's so sad. Oh damn, bro, really? I mean, because it's the damn. usual WB day and date thing, that's why they're out there operating on that god, shit. Damn. No, and it's not on Max. It's just it's VOD. It's not Max, so it's. Gonna, I know. It's VOD, I feel. I feel. I feel. I feel, kinda, feel it's good. It's I feel soon. Yeah, if, I feel it's gonna make its money on the VOD side of it, but it's still kind of like, damn. Like, the fuck? I'm just like, damn you all, because this is a, exactly a movie I asked for. It's blue. It's a character I love, played by the actor I wanted, wearing a comic book suit that looks like the fucking comic book. <laughs> all three Blue Beetles, the suits and all. I was like, I, oh I think my I, gosh, yo, folks, I told Prime about this like offline and he was like excited so when he came back he was like blue beetle oh my god i was like yep they didn't have to do it but they did it <laughs> they they did it. and like look did it have was it a perfect movie no. No, no had a lot of problems like i feel like oh we're going to spoilers spoilers for blue beetle for all six people who watched it who probably <laughs> you know we care but for those who might want to see the movie you I'm, yeah. I'm giving you time to walk across the room to your phone and press pause okay so um, my main issues with the movie mm. is that uh, I wish Jaime was more of a character. He kind of just seemed kind of like almost a non-entity in a lot of the times, which kind of sucks mm. ass. Um, I wish they would have had his supporting cast in the comic book in the movie. Um, I, it felt it felt strange Paco not being there. Yeah. Um, the villains were undercooked. Um, yeah, Omac could have been a little bit more. And I wish... I really wish they went with the infinite crisis design for old Mac, you know, with the blue suit with the fucking fin head. Like, why are you scared of the fin head? Why are you scared yeah. of the fin head? Yeah. They, they went, uh, are you telling the, me? Uh, Iron Monger. Right. <laughs> Iron Man. Right. Y'all telling me, y'all tell me that discount Iron Monger is better than Jack Kirby designs? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. You know, when Taka does better Kirby designs than your movie, it is an issue. I'm, I mean, you gotta, you gotta talk to somebody. It's like, we need to sit down. We, <laughs> we need to have a come to Jesus moment and be like, wait a minute now. <laughs> how to talk do how to how to talk out Kirby you <laughs> hold on we need to we need to uh, 
<laughs> we need to try. We need to roll this shit back, bro. Hold on, dog. Eternals out Kirby, you sir. <laughs> That's sad. Fucking Z Snyder out Kirby, y'all. Come on now. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? What what happened? Where did we go wrong, y'all? <laughs> what do we What do we go turn? Um, oh, also, I mean, this is kind of related. Uh, I'm glad you actually enjoyed uh, Mute Mayhem. Yes. Yeah, so look, like I always say, CJ, you know, the quickest way to shit me the fuck up is a is a superior product. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not anticipate to like Mutant Mayhem because personally, I think uh, Seth Rogen is a dipshit. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what does Seth Rogen do to you, sir? Is it preacher? He, he, was it preacher? Did, was it was a preacher that did it to you? Mostly, mostly preaching. Just mostly him just being just a, a total ass hat online. Okay. And um, I was like, I'm not gonna like this. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna like this movie. <laughs> Only thing that I liked about it when I saw the concept was like how young the turtles were gonna be. Because I thought, hey, wait a minute now, now that's a take. That's something we haven't seen. It's like they're actually like kid teens and not like they're like I would say they're like twelve. Well, they say they're fifteen. Bullshit. They're like 12, 13 teenagers, yeah. not like. The 17, 18 that we normally get in Ninja Turtle things. They're yeah. like, look, you can say they're 15 all the time. I'm talking about in the way that the turtles act in, in certain movies and certain cartoons. Like, those are way older teenagers. Like, they're, those are advanced teens. Go fuck yourself. Um, but these turtles actually felt like children. And I'm like, wow, this is actually a really interesting take. And I really like, wanted to see that. But I'm like, Seth Rogen is a dipshit. So I went in, like, not in anticipating to like the movie. I came out the movie and thought it was very, very cozy. It's a very, very good movie heavily influenced by the 90s show i'm not saying that oh, as a negative. i'm just saying that that's not a bad thing that's not a good thing that's just a state of fact this was heavily influenced they got by actual teenagers voicing it that's what that that right. what grabbed me like right. they actually acted like teenagers like and this scene is on youtube but the rooftop scene alone of them interacting with the list that they had to get for Master Splinter was pitch perfect like how teenager friends interact with each other <laughs> or Top that 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 scene they did in the school what was what were they talking about when they were doing like the robot dance yeah uh, <laughs> that shit was funny and i was like you know what this is a charming fucking movie this is actually a really good movie i have no major complaints like i say the quickest way to shut me the fuck up is just put out a good product that's all yeah. i got nothing to complain about it's, it's, nothing again again it's we right, said it's over about the cast. your shit can be mediocre but if i can enjoy at least some of it it's like all right, i have right, my issues right. but i enjoyed it fine just cool right I will I will give you your kudos. And like I say, I did not expect to like this movie at all. Like I had zero. <laughs> Hold up, are you there? Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Okay, now I hear you. My bad. <laughs> I was like, yeah, what a charming fucking movie. That's all. That's all. Yeah, you know, which um folks, you should actually uh go out and buy the uh two thousand one turtles uh uh box set of the show 2001 show with 2002 2003 Three. show 2003 show uh it's worth it um yeah post? yes 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 that that is worth it mine's actually came in uh it's coming tomorrow actually uh all right so so let's talk about this so i've been watching some watching some episodes right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i have a problem with the dvd not a major problem that's my problem. yeah yeah so um the transfer the fidelity is not good um they're spotty at times at least from what from what i've heard from yeah people. yeah it's like the quality drops like the scenes become kind of blurry the audio it's, it's like it's it feels like it was ripped directly from a streaming site because you know i know the the 2003 series was on like a lot of video on demand services I'm trying to think uh, it wasn't on i know it was on xfinity for a minute it was on netflix uh, for a hot minute and so I feel like it was ripped directly from that no transfer because they did not do any cleanup job. It's like it's 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 pretty rough sometimes, and it kind of takes me out of the show. But the show itself is still really enjoyable, and I'm glad to finally have all of it on DVD. Yeah, one of the things that a lot of us were talking about, like it's Turtles, is one of those franchises on the TV side of things. I would say just I would just say the property period. It's like every generation of kids has their turtles in whatever I might think of the, I think the, the CGI turtles show that they did after the 2003 season that when it came on Nickelodeon, that show was actually pretty good. That show was fantastic. Yeah. Um, even the one after that rise of the right. rise. Of, and again, rise, that was a dope same show. Thing. 
Same thing. Like I had some trepidation about that show when I saw the some of the character designs and I saw how they acted. I went, I don't know about this show, but like I watched it, and you know what shit me the fuck up? Good product. Yeah, and every it's funny that every generation of kids has a turtles they can grow up with, and and, I, and, and it's I just remember, like hey, they, it, it's just great, you know? Right, and it, and I think one of the key components of that is that you have to have a strong grasp of the four brothers and their relationship. Mm-hmm. Like I remember talking to somebody, I think was it you, where I said like you just have to you have to go out of your way to fuck up their interaction. Like yeah, if you get the yeah. turtles right. <laughs> Which is which is fairly easy to do because yeah. it's just four brothers. Like just that's, that's it. it. Just get, it's just four brothers and their banter. If you can get that right, then everything else kind of falls into place around that. Even the fucking next mutation got that right. Like with everything else that it got hate, wrong. Look, look, us as fans hate the fuck out of that goddamn show for right reasons, but yet the interaction with the brothers is like, oh, it's actually but not bad. They got it? they got the four of them right. Like it, you have like I said, you have to spectacularly go even out of your the, fucking even way. Even the Michael Bay one, like look, both of those movies. Even especially the Michael Bay one got it right. I like, like the second one. Insane. I like the second one more so than the first one, just because the second one feels like all right, they they finally well, are ch- all right, cool. You got me. You know, like the the first, like the, the the first one, the scene in the elevator, that alone sold the fucking movie for me. Mm-hmm. Like they just like they got the characters, they understand them. Great. Mm-hmm. If you get them right, everything else can just fall in place around. It's all right. And uh, I'm on the opposite of you, CJ. Like I liked the first one more because I felt the first one skewed a little more toward the Mirage comic books better and had like that really cool set piece in the mountain. Yeah. And the second movie, well, I, I thought it was okay, but again, it kind of went 80s. more they, heavily into they, the 80s, 90s show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think they listened um, to a lot of, you know what it was? That second movie, I felt- Was a course did, correct. It, it was a course correct in the fact that they listened to a lot of the older people for the nostalgia stuff. And it was like, all right, uh, throw Technodrome, let's throw Krang, let's get an actual Shredder Shredder. You know, let's, and it's like, all right, that's cool. I kind of like it. I guess you know what I understand it because the ambitions of that first movie was kind of like, yo, let's, you know, let's do something that's a little different. So I, I get it, right? I, I definitely Cause there, get it. Because if I remember right, wasn't this just, wasn't that movie was just going to be called Ninja Turtles? Then like a lot of people threw a hissy fit, and so they had to add the Teenage Mutant, but like they put it in like the <laughs> smallest font possible on the poster. Oh yeah, I mean, come on now, like that's, yeah. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> but I mean, look, I, I'm glad. Look, I can't wait to buy Mutant Mayhem on Steelbook because I'm definitely doing that. I would definitely recommend it. Also, understand, folks, the 2003 one, at least from what I saw, besides the stuff that Prime mentioned with the transfers, you're better off getting Turtles Forever on that separate DVD that came out a while back because the one that's on the box set is apparently like not as great. So yeah, that sucks. That's the only, for all intents and purposes, that's the only handicap <laughs> that's on that box set for a great box set. It's wow, just, and that's and that's 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 balls because like that separate release of that Turtles Forever, like it was hella cheap for like years. Like you can get it for like five ten dollars, and now that mug just disappeared. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I know this is more for Medicast. Uh, did you know Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters is a uh, hundred and some odd dollars now? Are you you shitting me? It's out of print, and apparently, because uh, I got the shit for twelve bucks on Amazon, but now it's like over a hundred some odd dollars now. I thought hey, somebody oh. was bullshitting, and I was like, oh, they were not fucking kidding. That well, hmm. god damn. Well, I also know that Superhuman Samurai that's going for a pretty penny if you got volumes one and two of that shit. Yeah, physical release, yeah. people. It's it's it's. Mm. Um, get the shit you like. <laughs> Buy it now. Buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you know, with um, Rider Strike and all that stuff, a lot of stuff's on pause. Deadpool three was looking to be um, at least before it was paused and to have some very interesting stuff. Uh, I don't know if we talked about the whole thing with um, I think we did. With Hugh Jackman coming back. Um. And such as Wolverine and him having the suit, you know, and all that, which is interesting. Um, apparently, Nick Cage might be in um, Deadpool 3 as well as Ghost Rider. Really? Yeah, which makes me feel like this is definitely like Deadpool 3, like taking a crack at a lot of like the Fox movie projects and, you know, and all that stuff. 
Which, I mean, I let him cook. I let him cook. Look. <laughs> so both Ghost Riders movies. I don't think we've talked about those those movies. Um, do we have to now though? Do we really? Look, all I'll say is this. I feel the first movie people enjoyed because we were just again, that's the era we were captivated at comic book movies happening, right? Like, oh shit, they actually did Ghost Rider and it's it's we see it on the screen, right? Spirit mm-hmm. of Vengeance, not so much. <laughs> I'll never forget when they did the black heart. I'm I'm still <laughs> Yo, mad as hell about that shit. I still could not make heads and tails of like Prime, they cut the budget for that movie and it shows. That's the most blatant, like that was the most blatant example of oh, you guys cut the fuck out of this damn movie's budget. Bro, bro, why were all the fight scenes just him standing there doing nothing? Like it's like all the budget went into Nick Cage's Ghost Rider. And, and, Nick, and, and, and maybe, maybe Nick Black Cage's pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean. It was very just raw. The fucking motorcycle Ghost Rider rides was so underwhelming. And I'm like, this ain't what is this? Like <laughs> what it is, ain't it, Chief? <laughs> I was like, just give me the first movie. I have issues with that fucking movie with fucking Mm. At least we got Cowboy Ghost Rider in the end of that shit. Hey, look, Sam, Sam Elliott as Cowboy Ghost Rider. Like, come on, man. That 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 just felt like <laughs> that was a no brainer. Damn treasure. <laughs> I need to give who I need who whoever had that idea. I need to give them. I need to give them a good hearty handshake. Like, that is the genius, the, the most genius fucking idea ever. Give, <laughs> give me them that their movie. flowers, right? <laughs> in fact, that was in the trailer for the movie. I was like. You guys blew your load right there. You blew it right there, right exactly. there. Exactly. Like, what? Well, what are you? What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> that was the time, Prime. That was the time. Um, so on the comic book side, uh, Night Terrors from DC, um, San Diego Comic Con. I interviewed a lot of folks at DC, including uh, Prime's arch nemesis, uh, Tom King. <laughs> My, my Lex Luthor? Okay. <laughs> it's Lex, your Lex Luthor. Um, and Night Terrors is the big storyline coming from DC. And I'm liking the, the vibe of it and stuff. Um, as I'll have all the interviews, actually, I already have them scheduled out to be dropping Friday and through the weekend and stuff. Um, Josh Williamson is writing it, writing it. And it's pretty much like a very comic book wide over the event. It take, it's it's a four issue miniseries. I think five, four or five issue miniseries. It takes place over the course of a night. So this is definitely a very kind of like, cause DC is known for this. They'll do little mini sort of big time events, even with a lot of crossovers and stuff with a lot of these characters. And it feels like they go by like quick and fast and stuff. And this one takes place during the night. Um, the idea of it is that like dead man is that kind of like basically front and center of this. You love to see it. Which I, I told Josh Williams, and I was like, bro, 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 I am a fan of lower end obscure characters getting their shine. And Dead Man is one of those guys that I, I want to say this the Justice League cartoon was the one that kind of caught my eye when that, that uh, Dead Man episode that they did. Um, I'm trying to think what episode was. Yeah, it was the one where he took over Batman's body at the end and he shot uh, Black Manta. Devil Racer. Yep. De- God, they did change his name to Devil Ray, didn't they? Damn. What was up with them not saying Black Manta? That was that was, that was kind of weird to me. They couldn't get the rights to Black Manta because it was tied up in one of the another, you know how they do those embargoes. Are you serious? That's also, that's also the reason why Aquaman didn't appear that much. Oh, yeah, and Unlimited. Yeah, he was barely there except for like the but yeah, he wasn't even in the final battle. He wasn't even there. Yeah. Um so the whole premise of Night Terrors is like Dr. Destiny gets attacked in his dream with like the, the, the twisted version of like the Hall of Justice and such. So Dead Man happens to feel the presence of all that happening and Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman pops in and basically it kind of ends up being this big sort of like, you know, mystery of like who was trying to attack Dr. Destiny and stuff. I've only read like the first couple of the issues so far, the first two and stuff, but um. A lot of the side stories coming out of it 
was interesting, especially like Harley Quinn has like a, a, a tie in issue to it, which um, I talked to Ty, Tina Tyler about it and she kind of goes into it because I was like, Harley Quinn, a character that's already batshit crazy. What does she have to fear, you know, and stuff? So it, it's, it's, I like the premise of it. I will say that. I like the premise of it so far. Um, so you would say it'd be worth me checking out in a trade, maybe? Yeah. I definitely, I would, I would definitely say it would probably be worth checking out in a trade and such. Um, cause it's, I think the way Williamson was telling me, it was like people kind of have to focus the difference between like, you know, your nightmares and actual fear. Cause there is a difference between a nightmare and a fear essentially. And that's kind of what this whole story is kind of balancing like fears and nightmares and stuff with all these DC heroes and villains. So like, all right, cool. Um, so you were what you were reading the uh, latest Thor books, right? Yes, I just read the Immortal Thor, Immortal Thor that just came out. <laughs> Who is writing that? Uh, Al Ewan. Oh man! So that it's, man must be protected. It's 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 okay. So I read the first issue. Okay, okay. And um, I got some good feeling. Like this is one of the first like new weekly comic books I've read in like months. <laughs> um, first one I've read in so fucking long. Um, and I gotta say, bro, I'm vibing with it so far. Um, is he I doing kind this, of like the same breakdown as he did in Mortal Hulk, essentially? Uh, you know, kind of a little bit. Um, okay. and I get when I was reading, I got some of the same vibes I got from God of Thunder, Jason Aaron run. Okay. And Thor is back in his classic costume, which looks fucking amazing. Oh, OG. OG mm. with the he's he's back with the guns out, baby. Oh, oh, oh the gun show, yes. Right, right. And it's like I'm 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 vibing, I'm like what they're going. It kind of has a kind of a callback to the immortal Hulk. Oh, really? Uh, and one of the one of the plot threads is like, wait a minute, it's kind of like, but I want to see how they're gonna do it with Thor. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay, because Al, Al Ewing, you know, he definitely like his whole immortal Hulk run of him, like kind of deconstructing um Hulk and so when he, this, he said they were doing a Mortal Thor, I was like, Mortal Thor. I'm like, oh shit. So I'm guessing this is his deconstruction take on Thor in the mythology. I'm I'm assuming so. Makes yeah, perfect that's sense. Kinda, that's that's kind of the vibe of getting it. Um, there's a really <laughs> awesome moment at the start of the issue mm-hmm. where I went, yeah, that's Thor's fuck. So I I'm in for the ride. I'll see. I'll keep reading. Yeah. Um. So speaking of deconstruction, Tom King he is um doing a penguin book uh for those that don't know penguin i know penguin in the comics he um faked his death and he used batman as the re- as the one that killed quote unquote killed him and he was basically hiding out in bloodhaven and penguin's sons pretty much took over his nightclub and his whole gun running thing and um apparently his sons are kind of fucking up essentially so now he has to come back to Gotham to essentially fix those things. So Tom King is writing that book, which I'm interested in. But he's also um, writing a Wonder Woman book because DC, for a while, they've been trying to like bring Wonder Woman up to prominence as like kind of like the focal point of the DC universe. And yeah, she was gonna be the start of 5G, but they um decided not to do that at the time (laughs) so tom king is writing a uh, wonder woman book to kind of put her front and center as like kind of like the focal point of the dc universe with all the characters which i'm interested in but it kind of goes back to what you were saying with him where it's like hopefully it's not sad anything and it's actually something that's a bit upbeat so jury's out on that one on what that's going to be um but yeah, it, look, I enjoyed my interview with him. Um, you know, I, once that's out, I hope you guys enjoy it, and, you know, and all that stuff. But um, it's definitely one of those things where it's like for me, like I get people's gripes with his writing, you know, and how it may not be their cup of tea, which is totally understandable because there's only so many times you can write something along those lines before people are like, all right, man, you're going to have to change it up or something. <laughs> You know, so 
I don't know. Um, Joe Casey is also Joe, is Joe, Joe. Joe Casey is doing also doing a uh, Zod book. That's a choice. Okay. Yeah, doing a Zod book, and he's definitely leaning very Wait, heavily. Drew Zod or Val Zod? General Zod. So Drew Zod. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's definitely leaning heavily on him being evil, not that anti-hero nonsense like he's because i asked i asked him i was like so i hope you're not writing him as anti here he's like no like no nah, he's evil like <laughs> like come on like we're, <laughs> there's no anti-hero here man this is zod this is general right. zod here like all right, okay. all right cool okay cool. okay wunderbar cool. wunderbar thank you thank you so you know i i'm like like you said you love to see it you love to see it because like what the fuck was up with that black adam book <laughs> And that's Christopher Priest, man. That, that that's a, that's that's our Jesus, Black Jesus, Christopher Priest. That wrote that. Oh, wait, what did he write recently? I, I, I don't know. I read it was Black Adam. Adam. He did he did Black Adam. He did no, Black Adam. Something else that he did that I read, I had, I had read. And I thought it was like, what's going on, Chris? Well, was it wasn't, it, it wasn't Deathstroke, was it? Because that that book was no nah, Deathstroke was peak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Deathstroke, Deathstroke was peak. peak. <laughs> um, it's like don't say Deathstroke. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah, what did he do? I, it'll it'll come to me. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. <laughs> um. So there's that. Uh, so speaking of what you'd love to see it, uh, absolute power corrupt corrupts absolute, and um, we're seeing it front and center with the uh, X Men. Uh, I, I think yeah, you know. I me knew you, about this shit. And that shit is funny. We we have talked about this since the start of the Krakoa era, where on paper the idea of the X Men finally gaining their own autonomy and not being you know, like cowering to humans and really doing that sounds good on paper, but a lot of the shit that's happening in the X-Men books. And I'm actually enjoying that angle is the fact that like, Hey, maybe there should have been some checks and balances on some, on them villains that you invited to Krakoa. Cause um, who trusts Mr. Sinister and not have any sort of like backup plan. If he fucks you guys and let him run around the Island unfucking checked, bro. Like, like you got Mr. Sinister. Nobody there was like, Hey, um, keep, keep keep get somebody to keep an eye on him so he don't like you didn't do that. You, you just trusted him because you know for the good of the mutant kind. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I get it because you you fear the humans. Which if you watch the Hellfire Gala, uh, the humans have come back with 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 a Nimrod that just murders people. And I'm from like, the sky with an elbow drop. Yeah. Um, which hey, you have rightful reasons to fear them, which is why I like the first issue of the Krakoa Age when they, you know, invaded that shit up near the sun and stuff and they destroyed it. I was like, I don't think this is the last of this shit, because they probably had a backup, but like go back to Mr. Sinister. I'm like, y'all did y'all really trusted this guy? Like, you do realize he'll sell you up the river, right? You know this, right? Right. Now look at you. <laughs> now look at you. In pieces. <laughs> Tragic. Now, now you gotta depend on Madeline Pryor and her Dark X Men to save your asses. Now, which, to be fair, calling them the Dark X Men is kind of weird when all the X Men are going around killing people now. So I'm like, what's the? What's is it really dark? Here? Is it really are dark? Are y'all really that dark? <laughs> y'all just the X Men well, now? Well, well, to be fair, her Dark X Men are, uh, yo, know, the callbacks with that group is ridiculous because it's like. Wow, these are characters I haven't seen since the fucking nineties. Holy shit! Like, <laughs> remember that was me. The Dark X Men is fucking pull back from the memory. Like, where are you from again? <laughs> member berries just kicked in. Like, holy shit! Because <laughs> it's like, what was it? Uh, who does it? Uh, let, me, let me bring up the fucking team that's on here. Because it, it's like, because 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 these are characters that are from Limbo, by the way. So there's that. Um. You got uh, Zazel, fucking Nightcrawler's daddy. Uh, Cyber Wolverine. Like I forgot that nigga existed. Thank you. I forgot it too. <laughs> like, it is insane. Hold up. Okay, there it is. Uh, in plate, Zazel, uh, Zero, Maggot infestation. Like Fatal, Goblin Queen, Snot, 
Fantasia. These are all characters from the nineties, folks. Like they 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 are like a blink and you miss them in the comics. Gimmick. Like yeah. So that that that's your crew of uh yeah, that's that's your crew of the uh dark X-Men that are um essentially gonna probably, you know, out of the ashes of the Hellfire Gala are gonna, you know, save the X-Men from uh you know Nimrod and them. And uh yeah, that's gonna be kind of interesting because it's like I- I'm kind of curious on how this Krakoa age is gonna kind of like end in a way. Yeah, that's my one that's my one thing because is it gonna stick the landing? I don't know. <laughs> Cause I'm curious because the toys gotta get put back in the chest one way. It's just like how are they gonna get there? That's not, that's the only reason I'm that's the only thing I'm curious about. It's like how are we gonna get back to Manchester? <laughs> and and you gotta get that MCU synergy going. So, cause like I don't that. think yeah, cause I don't think the MCU X Men are gonna be the Krakoa era. Like they can't be. Oh, they're gonna go pure '90s X Men, Jim Lee era. You know it, come right? So like, come on now. That's that, I, and, and, and that's to be fair. I don't blame them because that's the recognizable, recognizable. One that, yeah, you know, it's like M and PR. It's like. X Men. Oh shit, nineties. That's that's the one everybody knows. Jim Lee, like not Claremont, but Jim Lee. That's the one they recognize. So I get it. I respect it. You know, can't do worse than that era. You know, to be honest. So, but it's like, like you said, how do you put the toys back in their chest after the ambitiousness of what you're doing? Because to be honest, Sword of X is the only one that I feel was the black eye to Krakoa era stuff to me personally. You are a very forgiving man, CJ. Because <laughs> Soda X, my issue with Soda X, and I think we both were on the same page. Like, why did it need to be that fucking long? Why? Like, it had no business being that damn long with all them crossovers. Like, I just got the trade paperback of it. Dear God, Prime, the amount of crossover books with that is was ridiculous. That was that was insane, and it made no sense. Especially when half the book, the tournament, we they barely even showed any of the fights. Right. How are you gonna have a shown in battle anime with no fights though? <laughs> Just somebody off on the side. So what happened was, and I'm like, I would like to see that fight. Like, what the hell are we doing here? Like, bro, you ain't lying, that's exactly what happened. It's like <laughs> it'll start, then cut away and go, What an amazing battle. I'm sorry, what? It's like Logan having a coffee break on the side. Man, that fight was bitching. It's like, but we, we didn't see the fight here. What's going on here? Oh my god, man! I, like I said, I, I'm curious on what's 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 gonna happen with that. Um, you know, because besides that, um, I, I'm like catching up with Daredevil, and that book is actually pretty fucking good still. Yes, I'm hearing great things. Uh, that, how is it? You know, it, that's a book that people barely talk about. How that's a book like Daredevil is a very consistent book. I always tell people if you want to get into comic books, the two consistent books that you can read. Like I even if I'm not reading the books, I can always recommend go read Daredevil, go read The Flash. Yeah, they're like consistent. Depend don't matter what the writer is doing. It's like, okay, so what's uh happening here in this book? Oh, it's Daredevil. All right, cool. So, you know, it's yeah, de- definitely, definitely check out Daredevil. Um I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? What else? About to say something on the Power Ranger front, but I'm still like catching up, so I don't want to say anything on that. So, what's going on in Spider Man, bro? Who is in Spider Man? What's happening right now? I forgot who's writing Spider Man right now. Is it didn't something? Didn't, didn't something? Didn't something? I think it might have been something that happened with Spider Man recently. I think it was like, um, hold on, who's writing? Is it Zeb Wells writing Spider Man now? Yeah, Zeb Wells. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, Norman Osborn is the Gold Goblin. That's what the fuck it is now. I, yeah, yeah. That that's a thing now. Nor, Norman Osborn is now the good Green Goblin now, and I'm like, really? Like, who cares? Like, you know, because again, I'm 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 seeing that, and I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting because I'm like, when's that? When's that toy going back in the chest? And how are you putting it back in there? Yeah, because you know. Yeah, especially when no way. Have a Craven movie coming out. Because <laughs> ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell Norman Osborn finna get a fucking redemption arc. Ain't no fucking way. Can we can we just keep his ass a dickhead evil person? Like like why why are we trying to 
Why are we, why are we trying to anti-hero these motherfuckers up? Like, come on, stop it. Stop it. Right. It'd be like the the odds motherfuckers they want an anti-hero. Like, why are you doing this? Certain characters I can understand. Like when you when they did Dr. Octopus as you know, with being Spider-Man, I thought that was actually a pretty good series. Right? Like I, I like that idea of what they did with Doc Ock and stuff, right? But not not every person needs to be anti-hero. They can just be evil and no, just right, call it right. a day. Like, just, just right. call it a day. Um <laughs> William had a funny thing that that they needed to start doing in comics. So um Marvel's teasing the death of Moon Knight. And I remember William, this is like a couple weeks ago, he was like, Can we just put characters in comas instead of killing them? Right. Can they because de- like, death is just starting to become useless at this point. Like, right, especially with just, the X-Men resurrecting everybody. It's like, can we just put them in a coma? Can they just get amnesia and get lost for a minute? Can you can we do that? Hey, hey, work wonders for Wanda, didn't it? Right. She was out in the country doing fuck all for four years with no memory. And it's like, all right, cool. Keep her off the table for a minute. Just have her just out there picking fruit, doing whatever. Till we need her again. Boom. Just just you know, like you said, memory loss. You know, coma something, but the death of Moon Knight. I'm like, the nigga gonna be back alive. What are we, what are we doing here? Like Kamala Khan didn't stay dead for three months, bro. The body wasn't even cold yet, Prime. They didn't put her on the ground yet, bro. <laughs> and again, I want people to understand this. All right, so I'm of two minds. On one hand, I understand that the creatives from jump when they created Kamala wanted her to be mutant and mandate at that time because they were trying to make fetch happen with the humans. They wanted Kamala to be in humans. But my thing was like, why don't they just, why don't you just, just keep her as an inhuman and just make her. That's unique. what I'm saying, bro. I got a lot of pushback for that. I was like, no, her being in humans would actually put the humans back in a better place. Instead and my of thing like- about that. It's the people who defended it going, well, the creators intended for her to be a mutant. That's that's fair. That's well, fair. The creators but... intended Superman to be a bald, mad scientist with psychic powers. He's not. He's not now. That's not the character anymore. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. That's the that's the character. That's who the character is now. They're yeah. in the human. Yeah. Work with that. Deal with it. Yeah. I mean, look, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur... We know in the comics she was obviously inhuman. The cartoon obviously is skirting that, which I'm fine with. That cartoon is actually pretty good, by the way. I don't know if you watched it or not. Uh, it's on my watch list. I haven't started it yet. Yeah, it's actually really good. It's actually really good. Uh, it looks fun as fuck. Oh yeah, I mean it, it's it's hitting all the angles. Basically, like the comic book, it's a fun book about a little girl and a dinosaur getting into wacky adventures. Like, how can you really hate that? You really can't. It's like hating a squirrel girl book. It's like that book is actually pretty fun. You hate fun people? <laughs> I mean, a lot of these people are joyless cunts, so it is what it is. I mean, you know, come on. But um, but yeah, it's, it's it's you know, you had an opportunity to really have Kamala be the face of the humans instead of the royal family, because the royal family should be out in space. Personally, they, they they are a space family and having them on Earth, like I said, Marvel really fucked up, screwed the pooch with the humans trying to make fetch happen because of crossover and all that shit. So it was just like, I, I, I can respect creatives and wanting their original intention of the characters to happen, but it's like you didn't have to like kneecap your character's progression up to that point just to make that happen. Right, right. Exactly. Like, okay, she's part of the mutants now, so now she's going to be lost in the shuffle because of everything that's happening right now with the X-Men. Which, I mean, look, she still has her own solo book. That's fine. But, like, was there a real reason to do that, you know? Well, her book was canceled. That's why she died in Spider-Man. I think her book, she is coming back with her own book again. Apparently. Oh, that's right. Because it's gonna be what the amazing or the uncanny Miss Marvel or some shit like that. Something along those lines and stuff. Um, I hate long. that they're that predictable. They are. They are <laughs> that <laughs> fucking predictable. They got the uncanny in the front of it, so you know it's just how it is and stuff. I mean, Carol got a new outfit, which I actually do like, which actually is emphasizing her military background and stuff with the uniform, with the stars and stripes and all that stuff. I'm like, all right, that's cool, you know. It's obvious. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it rolls. Yeah, we'll see how it rolls. Like I said, I, at the end of the day, you know, again, it's the MCU synergy, which was weird because, like, watching, like, the Miss Marvel show, 
that show implied some inhuman shenanigans. But then they said she's a mutant, so it's like, okay, fine. I, sure, sure. Got you. Like, what, what do I know? You know? So, and I, you know, I know somebody's like, oh, now you're, you're an inhuman fan. I'm like, no, it's not about that. It's just, it's, it's like, okay, you know, problem like me and you talked about uh, Captain Marvel movie and how it would have been nice for them to really much like how Hank Pym was sort of, was basically like a mentor to Scott. It would have been nice to at least get more of Marvel in actual Captain- Marvel. Yeah, actual Mar. I don't even give a shit that she's a woman. It still would have been nice just to get Marvel being a mentor to Carol to see that dynamic. And we I do because I care that. about Marvel as a character, so I want to actual true, Marvel. True, but like I didn't care about her being a woman. It's at the end of the day, it's just to me, if you're going to do that change, at least show the dynamic of who Marvel is as a person to show how much that character influenced Carol. And we, I don't oh. feel we got that. And which, by the way, they name dropped Marvel in the Immortal, Ho- in the Immortal Thor book, and I went, damn, bro. Ooh, right man. in the feels, bro. Because <laughs> it was a scene when Thor was lamenting all his friends that he's outlived. I went, like, damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's a, that is a character that comic books never... Uncle Ben and Marvel, two characters, they stay dead. <laughs> they not coming back. It's- it used to be what was it? It used to be Marvel, was, Uncle Ben, Jason, and Jean Grey. No, it used to be uh, Uncle Ben, Marvel, Jason Todd, and Bucky were never coming back. And then, then Brew Baker said, "Hey, guess who's back? Back again." And then they <laughs> said, "Hey, hey, Jason, what you doing over there, bro?" <laughs> I couldn't even be. You know what? When Brew Baker brought back Bucky, I was like, I can't even be mad at it because this shit's fucking hot. When I said the store was fire, it was fire. Sure. It's like, all right, Jason Todd, it was weird because I'm like, how is it that a cartoon movie did a better job of Jason Todd coming back than the comic? Because it had a plan and it had, it had footnotes to go by. I was like, oh, so we won't be doing that. That's how we'll, that's how we'll succeed. Like, like Lazarus Pit. Huh, I didn't see that coming. Why the fuck did not, th- why the fuck did DC not think of this? This is, st- what? <laughs> Like, I don't know how did writers for an animated movie somehow outgun the comic book writers in that instance? That's I feel that's like a a, a rarity that ever happens sometimes. <laughs> like, I want to say it? now it's happening more often because these motherfuckers suck ass. It's a sick feeling, Prime, when that happens, don't it? Ain't it? <laughs> it's like, how do we? Where get do we to go this wrong? Right. <laughs> how gonna... embarrassing! It's like that thing in uh, the Turtles movie from 1990 when they were battling Shredder. It was like, all right, guys, at what point did we go wrong with this? <laughs> oh, my God, man. This Kyle books is weird. I'm really curious on what's going to be the synergy with Craven with that fucking movie. You know what? I'm waiting to see what fucking solo book they're going to do. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that... I'm still like at this point I, I went from not being mad at that movie to just curious and just like how funny is this movie going to be unintentionally now I mean it's, it's how you think it's going to spawn more or less memes than more Morbius <sighs> I'm going to say less memes than Morbius because like I feel Okay, the memes are going to go, is only going to pop up because I know they're going to do another trailer where we're going to see what the rhino looks like, and that's going to be the testing ground. Like, what is the rhino going to look like? Because <laughs> that shit in the trailer <laughs> where it's like, let me get this right. So my man got the blood of a rhino and can transform him to a rhino. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we'll see. Bro, I was we'll like, see. okay. <laughs> Sure, sure. Again, I need them to triple down at the end of this movie, bro. I need fucking Michael Keaton. I need Morbius. I need fucking Venom to show up and recruit him for the Sinister Six. I want them to quadruple the fuck down. If this get if this gives uh Andrew Garfield his second win as Spider-Man to face off against them, 
I, I guess that was the what what we had to sacrifice to make that happen. I mean, God. fuck it. <laughs> I don't want Tom Holland being involved in that shit. It's like just 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 let <laughs> just let Garfield live out his Sinister Six versus Spider Man dreams that we were denied. <laughs> Just let him yeah. do it. Let him finish that redemption arc, bro. <laughs> let him finish it, please. Um, so I'm excited for the Spider-Man 2 game. I'm quite yeah, excited for this shit. I'm seeing a lot of people turning sour on it. I'm like, what is wrong? Oh, for what? Y'all? Why? What is, what is going on? Why? Are we all just like, in our negativity arc right now? Like, if, if I'm marveling at people being overly critical, you know the situation's fucked up. I mean, look, they showed, okay, so um, I went to Spider-Man 2 panel at San Diego um, and we saw the trailer before they released it online and just, it looks to be, look, I feel this game's gonna probably be longer than the first Spider-Man game because like, I remember playing that game and you were probably like me where <laughs> when they did that time skip to Silver Sable's people martial law in New York, I was like, ah, oh, shit, I still got more game? <laughs> this is not a bad thing, but I feel the same thing's gonna happen in this game where we think this is going to be the end, and it's like, ah, shit, there's still more game, ain't it? So, um, what did you think of the trailer, though, with Venom and just everything that's happening? Uh, basically, that fucking meme I showed <laughs> with uh, <laughs> with Venom going, why do I hear Eminem all of a sudden? Uh, <laughs> uh, and look, to piggyback on your point, bro, uh, you're right, like they got a whole lot more because like we have not seen this whole game. Because I see a lot of people going, Oh, they're showing everything, they're showing everything. And I'm like, nah, bro. Think back to the first game and all the trailers back then. Like, we did not we're not seeing oh oh we he can go to other boroughs now, Prime. Bro, bro. When they said when, not... they, when they told us that shit, it was like, Oh yeah, he's he's going to other boroughs. I was like, ah shit. Bro, there is so much we have not seen from this game, bro. That means we could probably visit the raft this time instead of just looking at it from a distance. Right, right. Like that's <sighs> Insomniac. You know what? Take your time. Take your time with that Wolverine game. Right. Let, let, let y'all cook. Cook. I'll let y'all cook. cook. Not a fan of the costumes, but you know, hey. Just, you know, but hey, look, I did. Mm. Mm. And we don't even I know mean, what and we don't even know what Norman's role in this movie is gonna be. Saying, I'm saying, look, and they keep trying to red herring us, thinking it's trying to make it seem like um Harry's gonna be Venom. I really feel strongly that it's probably gonna be Peter. You think it's gonna be kind of like the uh ultimate Spider-Man where he was Venom for a hot second? Yeah, I think it's gonna be Peter. Before it goes to Eddie Brock or whoever the fuck ends up being Venom in this in the game. Well, they claim that Eddie Brock is not gonna be Venom, but I think Eddie Brock is in the game, isn't he? I believe so. Okay, so they might be doing like that shit to red herring us, kind of like the Arkham Knight thing. We're like, oh no, it's not Jason Todd. It's a brand new character. No, it's totally fucking Jason Todd. Like, Get the fuck out of here. The only the only time they got me with Arkham Knight is that I thought it was gonna be a Bruce Wayne clone. Which would have been, been fucking dope as shit, bro. I thought it was gonna be a Bruce Wayne clone because they said the Arkham Knight. I was like, how would you want to bet that's a clone of Bruce Wayne? Because this, mm. and then it's Messy, like it was Jason much. Todd. Fuck. Too much sense. And too what too kills me about that? What kills me about that <laughs> is that it only works if you if that only works if you know about the wider Batman mythos. Like if you were mm-hmm. just focused on the Arkham series, you don't know yeah. shit else about Batman. Yeah. Who the fuck is Jason Todd to you? Nothing. Nobody. Because I knew some shit was up when they kept doing like the flashbacks to Death and the Family. I was like, it's fucking Jason. That is fucking <sighs> Jason, son of a bitch. They 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 blew their load on that one. I was like, really. I, mm, mm, yeah so it's it's yeah i didn't i, I actually i didn't ask you uh what did you think of um uh, uh across the spider-verse i enjoyed it i enjoyed it um wasn't worth the suffering the animators went through but a fantastic fun movie yeah it's kind of funny how the news cycle went from man these animators are great too yeah these animators were on crunch time and i'm like fuck it's always back to the good old crunch ain't it Right, and the, and the, did you see that fucking home? What was it? Was it was it Phil Lord, who who chimed in in support of workers' rights during the strike, and everyone posted like, "Yo, be the change you want to see in the world, dipshit!" <laughs> like, what the fuck? But here's my thing: like, I get it, but at the same time, like, was it, it actually his call? 
Yes, they said that he was the one with changing oh, okay. the last goddamn minute. I thought it was like higher ups that were doing that shit. So my bad. Okay, fuck. You know, because no, hey, some, some, sometimes it ends up being people higher than the people that are actually supposed to be running no, it. Kind man. Of the, anim- the interviews I saw with animators, they were saying it was him personally, like at the last minute coming in on the change scenes or like completely reanimate whole sections just on a fucking whim. <sighs> shit. Especially with the way that, that movie's animated. I know that was probably hell. Pain in they fucking left nutsack, bro. If they had nutsacks, I don't want to be yeah. discriminatory. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, see that trailer for that Scott Pilgrim's uh anime? No, I have not. I am um, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm actually staying away from pre material because I want to be surprised when I watch the show. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I saw the trailer. I saw the well, it was really a teaser trailer. It was only like one minute, so they didn't really show much. It was just here's what the animation is going to look like. Hey, we brought back all the people that did the characters in the live action movie. Here you go. And it's going to be pretty much like the graphic novel with some slight deviations. Pretty much. OK, cool, cool. I mean, this is the greatest uh, redemption arc I've seen of a property in a long ass time, bro. I mean, the, the first part of that redemption arc was them giving us physical copies of that damn video game. I was happy. Right. So, hey, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, that's definitely uh, promising, so to speak, on that end. Um, trying to think, uh, what was it? I had another thing that popped up. Um, how did it do that? I really hate when it does that. I had like all that shit. <laughs> you know what? We talk about, Hollywood not learn the lessons. Um, you know, it started with the MCU and Hollywood not learn the lesson because, oh, we got to make everything a cinematic universe. So Barbie made it a bi- made a billion dollars, right? And um, Barbie's actually a good movie. Um, very solid movie. And now Hollywood's doing this whole, well, I guess the, 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 the thing is uh, do movies based off of popular products and stuff. And I'm like, that's not the answer the wrong fucking lesson like what what do no that's that's not the what what are we doing here okay (sighs) i hate hollywood sometimes i i I, I mean they are the absolute worst bro (laughs) I, i don't i just don't understand like the decisions that they don't get of like don't do a barbie too just it's barbie let it rock you know, uh, so it's it's there. Um, so I was going to do a separate show on this, but I got to talk about it. Um, Secret Invasion and the discourse surrounding it. Um, I'm going to need you to tell me because I did not watch that show. Okay, Secret Invasion as a whole, it's okay. I feel that the story itself was a lot stronger than the comics. Um, in certain regards, in terms of the execution of like the core of what Secret Invasion is, right? Which is the scrolls invading Earth and kind of like who are they and who isn't kind of thing. And just especially with the way it ended and the surprise it did. Um, I think the issue that comes up is that you could tell that this was something that much like we talked about earlier and how Marvel was pushing out so many products, you could tell that this was something that if COVID didn't happen, the meta narrative that the secret invasion was telling would have definitely permeated and hit harder with what they were doing compared to it just being released now with no, with nothing behind it kind of vibe. Um, it did some good things. It also did some things that were questionable. Um, that, like for instance, uh, so the scrolls have a machine. Um, apparently they got DNA of different heroes, which kind of came out of the whole shit with um, you know, in, in game where pretty much everybody was on Earth during that final battle kind of thing. And I guess <laughs> characters' DNA was just all over the battlefield, which not really shocking, giving the end of in game. So the scrolls essentially had DNA of like Groot and um, Drax and, you know, a lot of other heroes and stuff. And their whole thing was, you know, much like a secret invasion, they had themselves planted in different aspects of the government. And, 
you know, right then and there, Rhodey being another character. And it's like, all right, cool. He ends up becoming this big super scroll because now he has DNA of the Avengers now. And then Talos' daughter also has the DNA of all the Avengers and stuff. And it creates this kind of weird dynamic because by the end of Secret Invasion, Talos' daughter is literally like the most powerful character in the MCU. And she's working for the UK government now. And it creates this kind of quandary of, okay, so what do you do with this now? Like, this is a powerful character. So do you think she'll get more screen time than Hercules did? Depending on what projects they're doing it, because they said the Marvels is following up Secret Invasion, so it depends on what storyline that they have for it. Um, Wait, in what fucking way? How? Um, because apparently, like the Marvels is tackling, you know, the Kree homeworld and their whole relationship with the Scrolls and such as well, which is why Carol and them are facing off against the, I forgot who the character they're facing off. That's Kree. And that whole thing. Because you remember the subplot from the first Captain Marvel was the whole thing with the Kree and Skrull beefing, mm-hmm. essentially, and stuff. So, I don't know. It, they, it's, oh, go ahead. I was say where they went with the strange role of making the Skrulls the good guys? It's weird because in Secret Invasion, you realize that there's a splinter group of Skrulls that feel differently, which I was actually pretty, actually like. I like the idea of there being a splinter group of scrolls. They're like, yo, why are we here? Like, what the fuck are we doing here on Earth? Or, you know, some of them, they're like, hey, let's take over Earth. And so it, it's kind of a weird dynamic right now with the way the series ended. And it's like, all right, it's just, it's it, basically at the end of the day, Secret Invasion is just okay. It's, it's, you know, a lot of people that are falling over themselves over it, it's like easy, like chill and a lot of other people are like it's the worst thing ever it's like guys no it's not like <laughs> what if still tops out for me is like the worst thing personally um but like it's just one of those things where and i get where Iger is coming from where marvel studios really needs to kind of like take a step back and really figure out the direction of their projects and what they need to do with them because like like right now echo is still on target to come out in november right and you have to ask yourself, did Echo deserve like a show? You know, true, true. Um, and I'm and look, far be it for me to say that certain characters don't deserve a show, but like you mean to tell me you couldn't just do like the comics and you couldn't just weave in Echo's subplot into the Daredevil show that's coming out? That could have worked, you know. But maybe that they probably felt that people were gonna bitch and moan that why is Echo stuff in the dirt, you know, which do you read comics like Echo is just as much permeated in Daredevil lore than any other character? But whatever, you know who the fuck am I to say that shit, right? Um, but like, it's it's kind of like when I watched Moon Knight again, enjoyed it, but it's like that could have been a two and a half hour movie. I mean, it would have helped a lot with the pacing issues, and I feel oh, yeah. like. <laughs> I honestly feel like that's what happened with a lot of those uh, MCU shows. Like these things that would have been better suited for movies. Um, were just they took the concepts and just stressed them out and didn't know how to properly pad it and tell it as a television series because there are differences and nuances when you are changing something from one format to the other. Yeah, like I said, Cap, like Falcon Winter Soldier, I enjoyed as a show. If in fact that shit should have had like at least two more episodes, personally. So I feel like that shit should have been an hour and forty-five minute movie. I think it would have took away a lot of the drama from it, though, personally. I feel it would have narrowed the focus because it had a lot of wasted space and a lot of wasted time. They could have been better utilized, um, pared down and laser focused on. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, did like Moon Knight was definitely like you could have made this a two and a half hour movie and it was still got to the natural end point <laughs> that Moon Knight ended up ending on. And it's like, all right, cool. Like it's just one of those things where I feel they definitely do need to kind of like assess like, all right, if we're going to do this, maybe we should make this a movie like werewolf by night was the perfect example of yes, make this a 45 minute special. And it worked like werewolf by night shocked the fuck out of me on how great that was. I genuinely came out of that. I don't know. I don't know. Did you already, you watched that, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did. 
you said you liked that, right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I, I thought it was fine. I thought yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah, it worked for just a special presentation kind of vibe. Cause I don't know if I could see that. I mean, maybe I could see it as an hour and a half movie, but I think for what they were doing, it worked worked for it and stuff. And it's just one of those things that going forward, they really need to just make an assessment on how they're doing that. Like right now, Captain America Brave New World, you know, um, they're putting a lot of focus on obviously, you know the Serpent Society and Leader, which I'm curious on what the Serpent Society is going to look like in, in that movie. Um, I, you know, hopefully they go full tilt like the comics with the characters and what they look like, but I'm not holding my breath because, you know, um, we know the MCU does, like you say, tactical a lot of stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> So I don't know. We'll see. You know, uh, like I, I'm, I'm curious on that movie. Honestly, you know, besides Harrison Ford saying "What the fuck is a Red Hulk?" which still, bar none, far and funniest shit ever. <laughs> Again, Negro Domus. Oh, man, Negro Domus. Man, uh, you know what? Uh, spoilers for Transformers. Um, GI Joe is crossing over with uh, Transformers. Did I tell you when I saw that in the theater, I yelled out, what the fuck? In a bad or good way? In a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> in a very bad way. It was a very hard, confused, what the fuck. Did you just think about, <laughs> were you in your head thinking of, how is how is that Snake Eyes movie character going to cross over with this shit? Was that why you said that? No, well, that... I said that because when I, the whole time I was trying to figure out what organization that guy was going to be with because I was like, is it going to be the Earth Defense Force? Is that Sector 7? Is that... And that motherfucker slid that G.I. Joe card. I went, you dirty bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all I was the ex- fucking organizations, that, that shit could have been... It could have been anything. Nest. You would... Like, Hasbro. Hasbro. We just sit down and have an intervention. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. Y'all have failed how many times now? Let it go. I, and I say this as someone who loves G.I. Joe. You know G.I. Joe is my shit. I'm, I'm Let it go. Pro- I'm part of the problem, Prime. I, I was excited, but I was also confused. I'm like, look, as long as we don't get great value Snake Eyes back. And I like and I like Henry Golding. Terrible Snake I like, Eyes. I like him. God off Snake Eyes. <laughs> Snake Eyes, a.k.a. the movie that's just Storm 80s. Shadow. Storm, <laughs> Storm Shadow was right. <laughs> Storm Shadow Origin or G.I. Joe Origin Storm Shadow. That's right. I'm sitting there the watching the whole is. movie like, you know, Storm Shadow has a fucking That was pretty point, fucking dope. <laughs> I didn't say he had to kill a guy, but I understand. I'm like, he had a fucking point. Like, I understand where he's coming from. And like, and you being a total dick to him, Snake Eyes. Like, you, you bring him to your home. Because, like, look, the thing about that conflict from the fucking comic books is that he's a Kaijin. He's a ca- but Snake Eyes is in the right. Snake Eyes didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> like yeah, he was just innocent bystander. Like he's yeah, he tried to kill like, the master. And just right, like, he tried right. and, I, and he caught the arrow. And it, right, that wasn't. In this fucking movie, Snake Eyes is one thousand percent in the fucking wrong. Like what are we doing here? My man was about Why? to betray the whole clan because you know he was trying to find out who killed his dad, even though the guy that killed his dad was right in front of him. But okay, you know, I mean, you know. <laughs> Storm Shadow was just like at most the only thing you can look at Storm Shadow is like he's a little a little kill crazy, but you know, he has some points. He has some points. I understand, you know, anger, but I get it. <laughs> so Hasbro has really had a crossover with G.I. Joe because I think they were banking on the Snake Eyes movie to really reboot the G.I. Joe franchise and it Bro, they thought this shit as... was gonna sing. I think what it's it's what I like to call you overcorrect it because as much as Henry Golding is a good actor, it's like, I think folks missed the point that Snake Eyes wasn't meant, even though it was a white guy that Snake Eyes, he's not a white saver. He's just a dude that just got caught up in right the turmoil of the ninja clan and just got put into that position. That's it. He ain't white savior. It's just, that's just, that's just the breaks. <laughs> and I think a lot of people in their efforts of not understanding G.I. Joe Lord, they just see he's a white guy. So ergo white savior. And I'm like, he's not white savior guys. Like, right. And it's the same thing with like Iron Fist. Like it's comics are a visual medium. And so what's more going to stand out more when you have a bunch of ninjas, a bunch of black haired Japanese people training is that fucking blonde hair, blue eyed dude in the middle of nowhere. Cause he's an outsider now. And yeah. if, you know what, whatever. Yeah. 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 But you know, um, 
I quite like I said, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, we'll we'll see about that. Uh, also, <laughs> God. So there's a lot of people that are feeling some way about what James Gunn talked about with the, how he wanted to do Batman, and I guess uh, apparently James Gunn is kind of leaning towards a Batman Brave and the Bold uh, cartoon vibe for the tone of the Batman movie, which I'm like, that sounds about. I, I mean, I don't see the problem with that. I mean, I, I fucks with it. I like the Brave and the Bold cartoon. I think it's definitely one of the top Batman stuff easily. Like that, that shit was just. I didn't think I was gonna like it initially, but just everything that that that, that fucking show did was just top tier material. <laughs> top yeah, it's one of the best. I mean, so to me, I'm like, I don't see the problem. I mean, it seems like they have a again. James Gunn has a plan. Let's just see what happens. Like, yeah, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, we're already rock bottom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere the rock is laughing like you sons of bitch. <laughs> you got uh, me. <laughs> as always, kids, intend your puns. You choose them with forethought <laughs> and care. Oh, breaking uh, apparently Thor 5 is not in development. Oh, thank God. Oh, praise Odin <laughs> to the All Father. Thank you. So My this prayers is, are answered. And, and this is Taka saying that shit too. He's like, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Good. Like, Stay ignorant. Which you know what? I'm gonna, this is a good way to end this 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 off. I am I have been sick and tired for the longest time, and maybe you have too, of just the way in which pop culture media has been poked out, and it's all based around majority of it is based around my cousin's brother's uncle who said this, told me yep. this shit. Yep. And, and 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 it started out like, all right, this is stupid to okay, now this is getting fucking annoying. Right. You're right. You're right. Definitely. Uh, you know, and people are like, James Gunn need to shut up and just stop. And I'm like, no, he needs to do that because, like, nobody else is going to do it. Like, when people are like, oh, we found a Superman. He's like, uh, guys, we haven't even auditioned anybody for Superman. What are you talking about? The fuck? <laughs> There's like, always a bunch of just people trying to get one up on the air quote scoop. Bro, and it, prime, the ones that have me rolling are the ones that legit argue with James Gunn gun on the story and i'm like guys you're arguing with the guy who's literally like in those rooms you you really gonna tell the guy that's in those rooms what what he's doing bro he scheduled the meetings bro come on (laughs) i just i don't understand it it even it goes not it goes from the lower end to people like grace randolph saying shit and i'm like guys you're taking grace randolph's word word as gospel like why Say I question her reading comprehension. So y'all can really trust what she says. Okay, that's wrong, Prime. I mean, she can read. I mean, I watch her comic book YouTube channel. You know, I ain't wrong. You know, I'm right. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I I refuse to watch that. That that that, that I would lose brain cells if I watched her shit. I just I just see clips of it that pop up on Twitter, and I'm just like, how are people watching this? I'm like, how did how did you read the same thing that I read and get that? How? <laughs> Comics explained doesn't fuck that shit up. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't. I guess the complexion for the protection. I don't know what else to say, dog. I, I don't know. <laughs> complexion for the protection. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't get it either. Um, oh shit! Prey is coming on a uh, Blu-ray. Oh, let's fucking go! I love that movie. I, highly entertaining. Highly enjoyable. Very highly entertaining. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that is that is uh it for Kyle Book Corner. Uh, I have more to uh, image with the uh, Radiant Black uh, world and stuff because I'm like getting through those trades right now actually, and um, I probably have more on Marvel stuff because it's kind of ironic how it, like right now the dynamics is flipped. I'm reading more DC stuff and the only Marvel stuff I'm reading is like X Men. Because that's really? the only thing keeping my attention right now. Really? Wow. I know, man. Look, I didn't mention this, like the Catwoman, uh, the, her and Batman going, the Gotham War shit, with, with Catwoman and Batman going at it. I was like, this this, this is actually pretty interesting. I like this. <laughs> so I, I, I have more on that front. Um, 
yeah, I know that that's I know that's a shocker to you. Like he's he's reading more DC. I'm like I know. I I, I even put it on D on this one because D is more like he'll read. He's been reading more of the DC stuff for the longest time. So that's the other angle of it as well. So you know. I mean, um, yeah. And yeah. look, I'm I, I guess I'm slowly getting back in the game. I've been reading um that Flash crossover um One Minute War, which mm, what's the premise of that? So there's an alien species that has um, tapped into the speed force and they can use it to access super speed. And so what? they go around and invade planets and take them over in a minute. Holy and so, shit. When they, so when they come to Earth and they attack, it activates all the speedsters on the planet. So now they're in like flash time where they're battling this alien invasion and the timer is going down. They get um, 60 minutes to stop the war, stop the invasion. That's only X amount of speeches because it's like what fr- Barry. I say sixty minutes. I meant sixty seconds. It's the one minute war. My bad. Yeah, so it's Barry, Wally, Avery, Jesse, Jay, Jesse, uh, uh, Bart, Max. Uh, Bart, and uh, Black Wally, Max. Um, that's Gossip? Avery already. Yeah, I think yeah he had, he was in a one shot. He was in it too. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm I'm really like thinking of speedsters. I was like Reverse Flash, maybe. I haven't seen him pop up yet. I feel he would have to come in there because, you know, Reverse Flash is an asshole. Mm-hmm. I mean, e- Eobar Thorne is a, is a son of a bitch, and I'm pretty sure he's like, oh, no, you're not going to do this. Ali, I can do this. Right, right. So we'll, we'll see. Like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm, I'm slowly trying to get my foot back in, man, but then I see some stupid shit like the Hot Girl miniseries, and I'm like, man, why do I read comic books, man? <laughs> like, why? Hot Girl Why am I here? What's hot girl? Huh? Hot girl from DC. Hawk, yeah, hawk, hawk girl. Oh, I thought you said hot girl. I was like, hot girl. I mean, what the fuck is hot she girl? Is, she is fine as fuck, but that's beside the point, bro. <laughs> uh. Oh man, what are they, are they fucking that character up bad or something right it, now? It, the the writer sucks, and I feel like it's about to turn. They're about to turn. Who's, who's writing it? I don't remember the fucking name. Um, it's not Anders, is it? I got I got to look it up, but I don't okay. I don't like anything that writer's done. That's why when I saw the name of the book, I was like, oh, fuck, that sucks. <laughs> and um, I feel like there's going to be another situation where they take the character and turn it into their self-insert. So I'm not having a good time with that. So, you know. Hey, anyways, look, sometimes you have to take a step back. I think that's probably why, like, on Marvel, it's like, you know, other than, like, Daredevil and... Well, Daredevil and now, the, you know, and Luke Cage, because he's mayor of, mayor of New York and stuff, which has actually been a pretty interesting reading. Um, it's really been X Men that's been keeping me engaged and stuff. So it's like, yeah, maybe I need to like go back and see what's up with Iron Fist now, what's up with Shang Chi now, uh, what's up with Spider Man, like you said, Spider Man right now and stuff, and you know, and all the other characters and like, hey, what's going on here? You know, and seeing what's up. So well, yeah, that might be might be something to check out into. Yeah, definitely. So, um, but yeah, that in mind, uh, that will be it. We'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Avida Zen, my dudes.